delivered. Top price for our beef, beautiful San Francisco weather. What more could we ask? Well, a few days out of the saddle. <laughs> By golly, we'll have that, too. Listen, as a change from Hop Sink's chuck wagon, I'm throwing a little supper party tonight. Oysters, steak, champagne, the works. <laughs> after that, after that, five days for all of us in San Francisco with nothing to do but have a good time. Hot hey, to go. Oh, that's what I've been waiting to hear you say. What's the matter, Johnny? Mr. Cartwright, I think you made a mistake here. Okay. I got too much pay. No, no, you haven't. You and Ham both deserve a bonus. Now, you're going to have a good time, but remember, this is not the Ponderosa in San Francisco, so be careful. <laughs> Thanks, boss, but don't worry about us. After riding trail with these boys of yours, this town is going to seem downright tame. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Come on, Ham. Don't be late for supper. Fine, boys. Well, with hands like Johnny and Hamp, we won't have any trouble running the Ponderosa. Come on, let's get back to the hotel. Says some fun. Hamp, I'm beginning to like this San Francisco town. You know something? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy that sweet wife of mine a whole bowl of Chinese silk. Silk? You say silk? I said silk. Nothing too good for that sweet wife of mine. Gentlemen, I just happened to overhear. Now, as you see by my card, I'm a silk merchant, and I just happened to have a brand new shipment from the Orient. It's the home of the silk web. Now, if you'll follow me to my establishment. Why, sure, neighbor. shop because it's a uh, wholesale <laughs> right this way gentlemen I hope Shanghai Pete takes them off my hands that ship sails for Hong Kong at midnight take them in boys <laughs> That's very strange. Johnny and Ham should be here by now. Don't worry about them too, Paul. They'll be here. They ain't gonna turn down free oysters and champagne, I'll guarantee you. Uh, he's right, Bob. Hey, I feel kind of giddy. Oh? Why? Had ourselves a big time. Well, Adam's working himself to death. Uh, yeah, don't go to that do too, Paul. Really? Well, it's too bad you boys didn't think about that before you rigged those straws you drew to see who'd come on this trip. Hey, Paul. What about Hop Singh? Is he going to come home? Oh, I doubt that very much. He's got a hundred relatives in town he wants to visit. We should have a job to get back. That's tougher. Me and little Joseph have figured out the places where they got them good-looking waiter gals. Yeah, they're talking, brother. They're <laughs> talking, brother. If you think I'm going to let you and little Joe wander around the Barbary Coast at night alone, you've got yourself another thing coming. This is San Francisco. It's a big city, and it's a wild city. Yeah, but boy, you're not helping Johnny, go. Well, you're not helping Johnny. Haven't you ever heard of Shanghai? Yeah, it's got something to do with sailors, isn't it? You know there isn't a ship in this harbor that isn't short of sailors. You could be slugged over the head and on your way to Singapore before you ever knew what happened. That's a good problem, Oh. No, there's a lot of good-looking women in Singapore. In Singapore, but not on board a ship. And how would you like to eat nothing more than sour salt pork for more than a year? Uh, I don't like that. No, I guess not. Well, you boys take care of yourselves. This is San Francisco. It isn't the Ponderosa. There's him, Johnny. Now. About time. Uh, I'm saying, I thought you were with your relatives. Something wrong, I'm saying? Not no for sure. The number three cousin, DC two cowboy going heavy. Heat on head, not come out. Cousin, come quick, tell Hobson. Think maybe it's Mr. Hamp and Mr. Johnny. Hamp and Johnny? Oh, wait a minute. What makes you think it might be Hamp and Johnny? They not in hotel room? Well, maybe it wasn't to check on. I think we'll all check it. Probably just over in some saloon having themselves a good time.
can I do to make them look more like sailors? Oh, Any luck? Not a bit. Any luck? Nothing. Well, I'm going to the police. Hey, listen, you might force have a look around some well, I guess it doesn't take four of us to talk to a policeman. Just a moment. Remember, this is not the fun and why you know us better than that? Police Department. It's exactly that. Well, I, I just told you, two of my top hands have disappeared, and I've come here for help. And I suppose you expect me to drop everything and go find them? Well, yes, that's exactly it. Mr. Cartwright, men are always disappearing in this city. Can you do nothing to try to find out what happened to them? Do you realize how many policemen it would take to keep an eye on every Shanghai hideout on the Barbary Coast? Well, Sergeant, I'm not interested in how any men it would take. I can't give a hell. Mr. Cartwright, this is a seaport. Ships come here from all over the world. Ships need sailors. Oh, sailors, yes, but not cowboys. You'd be surprised how many cowboys become sailors. Now, I suggest that you do as all the ship captains do when they find themselves shorthanded. So you find yourself a new crew. Did you sit here and condone the fucking standing of human beings? I don't condone it, but I don't have enough men to do anything about it, so I accept it as an unfortunate fact. Now, please, if you'll excuse me. All right, Sergeant. You mark my words. I'm going to find those two men of mine with or without your help. All right, go right ahead. But I'll find you. Look out. We're pretty close to the right? We're much information, do they? That's because they're all in good. Come on. And I'm going to get any of this. Boss, why don't you come on side of the street? I'll take this side. I'm saying go check with your cousins, see if they see me. Not thinking that you'll force me here on the coast. You're the best. Now, I heard the element of having a lot of fun down here with Barbara Cook. Well, you know what? I'm saying the same thing. Give me a chance. Better. 
Mr. Cartwright? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Where's Hassan and Joe? They go probably close. What? And that good. On probably close, hit, slice, cut, push. Very dangerous. The Shanghai. Little Joe didn't have enough sense to know that Hassan should have been you tell him. I tell him. He said he looked like fun. He looked like fun. Better find those two before they get into some real trouble. Barbary Coast. I should go find Cousin. Kevin, the whole Barbary Coast. Come on, let's bust him. Hey, man, you did this for money? I told you it's going to be fun down on this Barbary Coast. Look at that. A hundred dollars. Makes me mad in a mischief to think about how much talent I've wasted for free. Conceivable idea of the seriousness of the situation we're in. Serious. Paul, you still think Johnny and Hamper in trouble? Think it? I know it. I mean, Shanghai. Yes, I mean, Shanghai. Dad, burn it, must tear this dang town apart. They do no such thing. I'm not going to invite trouble unless it's forced on us. And that goes for you in particular. Don't stand there making a spectacle of yourself. Look at your car. Mm -hmm. in like we're going to tear the place apart. No, we used to do it that way. But it won't work now. Make two boys, you get back to the hotel and you stay there. Don't move until you hear from me. I'm going to see what I can find out alone. Hey, Paul, do you think we'll go along with you? No, I don't. If I find out anything, I'll send Hopsey. Yeah. Paul, you stay out of trouble, you hear? You make sure you listen to your own advice, young man. You too. Squash. Bother at all. That's what I'm 
There's a surprise. Somebody, something wrong. Why, sir, this is the finest brandy squash I've ever tasted in my life. And I've tasted them all the way from New York to Chicago to New Orleans. Well, I'm glad you like it. It's an art. art. It's an art. Not many men have the talent for it. You have work in New Orleans. No, can't say as I have. A man with your talent could demand. a lot of interesting people. <laughs> All kinds, without a bother. I wish uh, that a place like this, practically everybody in town drops in here one time. Well, we get our share. I have two friends in town. I just got them in here and show what a good drink really tastes like. Hey, I wonder if they've been in here before. Well, i got a pretty good memory for faces. A couple of cowboys, they work up a ranch in the Sierras. Drove a herd of cattle in town. Let's, let's see now. Let's see. I want to get this straight. You said that they were two of them. That's right. Those two are inseparable. Two of the best things they ever had. My name is Alexander I'm the proprietor of this establishment. I don't believe I've had the pleasure of seeing you in here before. No, no I think not. My name is Ben Carter. I'm the bartender on the excellence of his drinks. Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, why don't we go down to the end of the bar? It'll be uh, quiet. saying or pull in the next 15 minutes I'm just about ready to go down there and tear this dang Barbary Coast apart board for board. Where's Paul? Not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? Where'd you live? Mr. Cotlight tell Hopsing wait. Hopsing wait a long time. Mr. Cotlight no come back. Hopsing wait. Come see you boy. Hopsing you shouldn't have done that. Paul comes out of there and you ain't there. What's he going to do? Number five cousin, wait. Well, just don't think anything's wrong with Paul. He can take care of himself. Get out of this mess. 
There's nothing we can do. You raise a fuss, they come in and beat you over the head. I've got some fun. Sounds like that Mr. Pendleton. Will you promise me six and three? You've got to get me time. I need those men. My ship sails at midnight. Mr. Pendleton. Excuse me. I want to make a deal with you. A deal, Mr. Carter? I don't know what you expect to get for us. But whatever it is, I'll pay you twice that amount if you let us out of here. Twice? Fair enough. Oh, no, you don't. A contract is a contract. You agreed to give me six men. So I did. An interesting offer, Mr. Cartwright, but due to circumstances beyond my control. Three times the gold price. A contract is a contract if you want my business in the future. As you say, a contract is a contract. Good. The one who's talking, he isn't drunk. Perhaps he just holds his liquor with. You know my principles. No one in. The two sailors, yes. The sober one, no. Unless you get me four men within the hour, I'll take my business to cut rate Joe. Mr. Cartwright, I feel pretty low down about all this. Oh, John, it's, it's my fault for not keeping us all together. All right, come on, let's go. Don't you, Mr. Cartwright. But just be getting a beat for nothing. Believe me, it's best. All right, come on. Boys, well, we'll, we'll get out of this somehow. My boys are bound to be looking for me now. No, no, not that one. The captain turned him down cold. I'm getting worried. Me too. Get just about ready to tear this damn plane down apart. Come on, Joe. I brought you something to eat. Well, I'm not hungry. Shanghai Pete, is that what that Mr. Pendleton calls himself? Well, you got it wrong yet, too. Shanghai Pete sometimes calls himself Mr. Pendleton. Uh, Mr. Pendleton. What's all that thing I know? No knockout drops in it. You're really the teacher. What? Well, I mean, is we don't get your kind in here often. Mostly drunk. Have you know that them other two, two of the finest men I've ever known, just because they happened to go out in a little celebration. It wasn't a little one. It was a real good one. I don't know why men have to act up so. It just gets them in trouble. I wish someday I'd find just one man who wasn't always one to get into trouble. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, don't go. But why not? Sit down. What's your name? Kathleen. Kathleen. Well, that's it. That's the right pretty name. I think so. Uh, your name is Ben Cartwright, ain't it? Kathleen. Tell me, what what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Ain't that funny? So many men have asked me the same question. I've given it a lot of thought. I think the reason is I like the money. Well, it's certainly an, an honest sort. <laughs> I think so. Well, why are you surprised? Well, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you can't just trust everybody. Kathleen, I trust you. I was sort of hoping you would. Kathleen, now tell me, if this uh, Shanghai Pete or, or uh, Mr. Pendleton or whatever, 
whatever his name is. If he tells me, do you get anything out of it? No, I don't. It's not a pity. Well, wouldn't you like to? Oh, yes. I've been asking to be put on commission. Kathleen, if you help me out of here... Mercy, no. Well, I have the money. Well, I don't see how you could. Wait the minute they brought you in and picked your pocket first. I, I mean, I, I don't have it with me, but I own a ranch. I can get all the money I want without any trouble. If you help me get out of here and tell me where I can find the other two men, $500. You wouldn't back up. Oh, I give you my word. The money's at my hotel. If you help me get out of here, you get the $500. You know something, Mr. Cartwright. I was thinking about getting you out of here the minute I came in. You help me, Captain. Is this any way to get it? This is a respectable establishment, son. I'm the proprietor, Alexander Pendleton. Have I the pleasure of seeing you in here before? Don't make no difference whether you have or not. I will need some answers. Now, son, please try to calm yourself down. What is it you want? I want my paw. His name's Ben Cartwright and two of his rage hands. Then why was shouting? I talked to Mr. Cartwright just a short time ago. Told him where he could find his men. Mister, are you telling me the truth? Now, why would I have any reason to lie to you? Won't you please put that thing away? I have a reputation to maintain here. That's better. Don't you forget, I can draw it out again right quick. Laddie Buck, I'm only trying to help you. Do you want to hear about your father or not? I reckon I did get a little too excited. Dad, Bernard, I've been plumb sick. Well, now, why don't you try to calm yourself down? Everything's all right. Why don't you come down here at the end of the bar? What? Relax. Have a drink. What do you have?
and rats the lot of you. He won't be too easy to turn over. I'll have to buy him new clothes. The overhead has eaten me up, Katie. All right. I'll make it half price. Seventy-five dollars and it's a deal. But only because I've got to get back to the store before I miss. Great Buck, you're a thief and you know it. But I do need the merchandise. Don't sweet him, you little double crosser. You're so caught right to cut right. Because it was costing you money to keep him. All that good food. And especially if you couldn't sell him quick. Now don't do that. I wouldn't cheat you. Sweet heart, now would I? I'm not so sure. Little Katie wouldn't hold out on Shanghai feet. Here you are. See? Twenty-five dollars. Is that all you got for him? Captain Shock already turned him down. And cut rate you was gonna be stuck with him. <laughs> You're not mad at little Katie now, are you? Lucky for you, you caught me in a good mood. Besides, I've got another car ride. And is he a beauty?
because I'm after your future business. Besides, your ship sails at midnight. Cut rate, Joe. You know my principles. I'm a fair man and a temperance man. I'm not offering you a drink. I'm offering you a sale. I do not approve of the practice of Shanghai. No, I do not I would not resort to it except I find myself so often short-handed. Now, what kind of an excuse is that? Sir, I have dedicated my life to stamping out the evils of drink. It is abominable. Any man who is so drunk that he doesn't know what's happening to him deserves to be shanghai This man is perfectly sober. I can't use him. Well, thank you, Captain. I can't say I agree with all your principles, but... Hey, smell, Captain. The reek of demon rum is nauseating to me. This man is obviously drunk. I'll take him. All right, what's your part in this? Honestly, I just happened to be talking about it. Well, you just better happen to start remembering a few more things. Oh, now, Daddy, you wouldn't be hard of a little bit, would you? <laughs> That's such a beautiful arm. <laughs> It'd be a shame to tear it off. <laughs> Stop talking. I don't know what you want to know. We want to know about a man named Ben Carter. Mr. Horse, this cousin number three. He see Mr. Ben. They take Mr. Ben away from ship. They find him a few people. Okay. You follow me. Don't fight it, Mr. Carter.
Johnny hadn't wanted to buy some silk for his wife, he wouldn't be in this mess. Oh, we've been in worse messes. Back in the Ponderosa, we've always been able to get out of them. I know. My heart just ain't in it. My heart is in it. After what I've been through, the ship in 47 is beginning to look pretty small. Captain! Captain! I don't want to see you, Captain! Come on, Captain! I'll see you always ever in the future. If you want to see me, you come to me. Don't send for me. It isn't done. Oh, it isn't it? Will you listen to me? Have you ever heard of me? Why, oh, you're worse than a pirate. You and your high principles and your temperance, I'll see to it that your license are revoked on every seat in the face of this earth. Just who do you think you are? I'm Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa. The Ponderosa? The Ponderosa. I know well, Captain. A four-masted schooner out of New Orleans. The Ponderosa is a ranch. A ranch? I always wanted a little chicken ranch. There's a place up in Santa Rosa. I'm an American citizen. I have rights on board of every ship. Hey, Mr. Ben, on that ship. I have enough men in those mountains to sink every ship in this harbor. So... That's how Pa's voice comes into my ears. It's like a bugle call for your charge. Let's go. You to stay out of trouble. Well, it took you fellas long enough to find me. If she didn't get enough, you might want to send you back. If she didn't get enough, you wouldn't want to admit it, would you? Very funny. Come on. Uh, hi. Here are your clothes, Mr. Cartwright. How'd you get them? 
We have a little distance left to finish with cutting. Yes, I see that. You know what that little weasel was doing? He's going back into business. Second hand clothes. He was trying to sell outfit. Mr. Johnny, have surprise for you. Number seven cousin is still business. Make it present. One four five China still for I still would like to have me a court and trade made out of that. I wouldn't do it, Ham. Still can get him out on a whole lot of trouble. Well, at least we're all together again. And tomorrow, and tomorrow we're going to set up another vacation. How about it? Okay, I'd, I'd just assume we went back to the pond. Well, you're the one who was yelling about getting a vacation. I know. I, I know but a vacation is time for a change, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think I got my change. <laughs> All right. Hope it's all the same to you. There's, there's a little devil of wildcats on the Ponderosa. I think I'd rather tangle with than any more of these city folks. You want to go back to work? Oh, I didn't fall in that way. You could let them let them have a vacation. <laughs> all right, then. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, we'll head back to the Ponderosa. How sing have one more big supplies. Number nine cousin is cook in hotel dining room. Helping help fix special fun supper. Oyster champagne steak. Everybody for us to clean up and get out of the dark room. Come on. Come on. You stay right here. Helping bling up. You don't leave a hotel room. You go properly close. Very dangerous. Hit. Sell us to keep. Push. Shake high. <laughs> <laughs> you got something better than that. <laughs> sure. That little gal get for you. You'll never know.